Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Blue Abroad show. And today I've got another special guest. As I always say, they're all special, but it's always unique to be able to interview uh, one of our very own players. Um, very interesting story today. I'm talking with none other than Brooke Walker. First of all, Brooke, welcome. Thank you very much. That's a bit of an intro there. I think you're supposed to say your most special guest, but that's okay. Oh, look, we have had some very special guests, so we're going to, uh, we're going to put you to the test and uh, see if you can earn the title. No, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it should be good. Um, Brooke, talk to me. How is 2021 going? I think we're all excited to be moving on now um, and looking back to getting, um, you know, back to what we think is the closest thing to normal. Um, on a high level, what's happening in your world? Um, not too much, actually. I'm a, I'm a teacher, so I'm, I'm enjoying the six-week holidays that I get, um, paid, of course. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so, no, I'm glad to put 2020 um, behind me and move on to the new year um, and really, really excited to get the AFRW season underway. We've been going really well as a team so far, and it's been so awesome to be able to socialise with our teammates again, um, obviously, because we had that isolation period. So, no, nah, really looking forward to, to what's ahead for 2021, Tezza. For sure, for sure. And, I mean... There's so many ways to introduce you. You're a, a dual athlete, um, elite sports woman, um, one half of the Walking Duos slash Walkings <laughs> podcast. Uh, where do we start? Let's um, let's start with you and, and where it all began because you you were born in New Zealand, right? So, yeah, that's correct. I was born in Auckland and then quickly moved down to Christchurch and then moved to Gold Coast and then went via Sydney to Melbourne. So I've been a bit everywhere, I think. I don't even know what to identify as. Am I Kiwi? Am I Australian? I don't even know. <laughs> so when did you come to Australia? Um, I moved to Australia when I was about 13. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you, Dad, had a solid, um, you had a solid start in New Zealand. I mean, you, you went to school there up until yeah. high school, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So what was it like? What was the catalyst for the move? Um, I think dad was just um, looking for more work opportunities. So he worked in the mining company. Um, so we made the move over. Absolutely, it was often when we moved over. Took me away from all my friends and family, but I quickly fell in love with Australia. And now I can't really imagine moving back to New Zealand now. But yeah, so dad just followed his opportunities um, with work. And yeah, haven't, haven't looked back since. Fantastic. And uh, I'm assuming New Zealand is where you started playing rugby. Yeah, yep, yep. Rug, um, rugby is a huge sport in New Zealand, so I was pretty much just rugby, rugby, rugby growing up. Um, started playing rugby when I was about eight years old, I think, with the boys, the only girl on the team. Uh, a bit like the stories of, with the girls who play um, AFL, they're sort of the only only girls on the, the boys' team when they're younger. Then when you reach a certain age, you, you go into the girls' team where you have to unfortunately stop playing um, so yeah, that was, um, my, my upbringing, just rugby. My brother used to use me as a tackling bag when he was playing rugby. He was probably, he's just about six years older than me. Just used to get me to run straight at me and then tackle me. And I think I ended up falling in love with rugby because of that, just being smashed by my big brother. But no, yeah. I mean, it, it, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, I've, I've been watching the AFLW now for this will be my third season. So I missed the first season. Yeah. Um, I wasn't in the country, so just, you know, just didn't watch it. Um, but, you know, obviously you, you've come into the fold a little later than than some of the other girls who have started from the beginning. And um, I've actually appointed you as my new favourite player, um, <laughs> mostly because you uh, you bring that, you know, you bring that that ferocity in the way you've just described your upbringing with, with your older brother. Um, it makes a lot of sense because you are a tackling machine. Is that something you pride yourself on? Yeah, I think that's one thing that I've really tried to bring over from rugby. Um, just my intensity and in, in tackling and being physical with, with contact. Um, but compared to some other girls in rugby, I'm probably like, I'm probably not as aggressive as what they are. But coming over to AFL, I was actually able to showcase um, my tackling skills and my, my urge to, to chase the, the contact a bit there. Um, so, yeah, that, that's something I really try to try to um, pride myself on, especially in the forward line. You know, it can be so hard to get a touch sometimes. So you just got to switch into defence mode and make yourself present in, in that, um, yeah, defensive transition and things like that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I found out that you actually grew up playing badminton as well. Yeah. Yeah, I did actually. I grew up playing um, badminton with my dad. We had a pretty pretty good doubles team happening. I think I was about seven years old and, and – um, 
started getting into. I think it quite helped me with my hand-eye coordination. Um, my dad was pretty good at badminton. We used to play other other um, kids from school and their parents, and they were always um, with their mums, and I'd be like, Dad, I really want to win. Can you please just spike it at him? And Dad would be like, no, Brooke, this is supposed to be fun, not competitive yet. So, yeah. Okay. No, I, I found that very interesting. It's um, you know when you do, when I did the research, you're always looking for little little bits and pieces to bring up. Um, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Um, so you get to the Gold Coast, obviously very much a rugby dominant state. Um, mm. You've come from the rugby background as it is. Uh, where does where does AFL or AFLW where, where does footy when does it come into your life and then how do you then decide? Okay, hey, I'm going to give this a crack. Yeah, um, so straight after high school on the Gold Coast, I um, was lucky enough to get a contract for Rugby Sevens in the Australian program. So uh, that was just my dream, obviously, being a full-time professional athlete in a sport that I absolutely loved in Rugby Sevens. Moved to Sydney, was in the program for about, um, I think it was about four years. And during that time in the program, I started to see AFRW pop up. And I was always interested in the sport. Obviously, I hadn't watched it too much. I lived in New Zealand on the Gold Coast, not huge huge places um, for AFL and I just watched it and I sort of just sat back and I was like how cool would that be how awesome would that challenge be to go to a new sport and be able to compete with these amazing athletes like I still remember watching I was a proper AFLW fan still as a rugby player full-time contract rugby player I was like this would be so awesome and in rugby I was a little bit of a kicker as well so I was like oh I could potentially make a transition if I felt like um, I needed to move on to a next stage in my life so that was sort of the thoughts I had um, during the infancy of um, the AFRW in that first season. And then, um, yeah, towards the end of my um, contract, I sort of had a look into a little bit more. And then, um, yeah, I was sort of contacted by um, Graham, who was the list manager at Carlton, looking for some cross-code talent. Um, so I thought, you know what, why not? Why not come down to Melbourne, have a bit of a kick around, see if, uh, if he sees anything in me, see if I see anything in the club. And I remember getting taken around on the tour of Carlton um, at Icon Park there. And I was just blown away by the facilities at the time. I, was, I had absolutely no idea um, that the facilities were what they were. And I was just, I was actually just shook. I was like, this is amazing. And what he'd said about the program and things like that really just sold me. And it wasn't too long before I made the decision to transition over. And now you've come to the greatest club in the history of the game. Absolutely, hands down. <laughs> Um, I, I, I can't help but feel like the move from New Zealand to Australia um, broke down a bit of fear for you uh, in terms of coming to a new environment. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people think of a move like that and it can be daunting at times, especially when you're 13, um, you've already established your friendship base, you're starting to only just begin to um, tap into who you are and what you like and your social uh, skills start developing. Um, is that, is that something that has helped you to translate from, uh, you know, obviously countries and then from rugby sevens to, to AFLW? Because you seem like you've got that will to want to take on a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, just like you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think I found that out pretty early. I remember when we moved over to the Gold Coast, I was like, Dad, you need to sign me up for a touch team ASAP or some sort of sporting team so I can get out there and obviously play sport but at the same time meet people and things like that. So exactly what you said there. I think, um, yeah, you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable and I think that's shown in my journey so far. Just like sporting, I was so, yeah, I was so nervous when I first came to the club and met, met the girls but I was so wrapped to see how, how inviting um, they all were and they all took time to get to know me really quickly. Um, which is really cool, and it just made me even love the club even more after that experience as well. Yeah, yeah, and, and not not only with with Carlton, but I think the AFLW in general. There's a, it, it's it's obviously unique in the way that it's set up. Um, but one thing that strikes me is um, how the AFLW look to promote the um, the athletes who do things outside of the sport, whether that be another sport or w whatever it is the case. Um, I think that's quite unique, and and the fact that. Um, you know, you, I mean, Taylor Harris, for example, she boxes in the off season, just casually, uh, just casually wins world titles. Um, yeah. Chloe Dalton, obviously on her journey. Um, you were obviously, you went to Rio in, in 2018 with the squad. Um, what, what's, what, what does that mean for you? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool that the AFRW obviously encourages, um, people to, to be dual athletes or dual in whatever um, area they're following in their life, obviously because it's not full-time at the moment. I think the AFRW does a really good job in supporting 
um, athletes or people in their other um, interests. And I think um, they've done really well to promote it as well on their social medias, like Taylor Harris winning the the world title, which is amazing. And then there's people like um, some of the, the girls who also play soccer outside of AFRW. And, yeah, as you said, there's Chloe with her rugby and stuff like that. So, no, it's a, it's a really inclusive and supportive environment for, for the part-time athlete. Yeah. Um, I'm going to run by a description of you that was given. Um, maybe you'll be, able, you'll be able to guess who gave you this description. <laughs> but it was uh, lanky, sarcastic, and sweaty palms. <laughs> oh, did someone at Carlton say this? It was actually you. Oh, did I say that myself? You- Oh, so that would have been when I was still at rugby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I found a clip on YouTube and uh, yeah. I was like, okay, that's interesting. Let's unpack this. <laughs> yeah, I think I used to be a lot more lanky um, in rugby time. I was just, I was probably weighing about 50 kg, so I looked real lanky. Um, yeah, sweaty palms is a thing for me though, yeah. yeah. Okay. I yeah. find myself just randomly getting sweaty palms in the randomest of times, but... I think maybe that was, I don't know, who knows, maybe I was still going through puberty then, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're all grown up now, you're, um, you've are you just turned 26, so a belated happy birthday, obviously. All right, thank you very much, Terry, but like, <laughs> 26, whoa. It's, uh, it's peak time now, you're entering the prime of your life. I know, that is late 20s, I know, I know, I need to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't need to grow up. You need to stay. You need to stay. Uh, stay with that life inside. I think that thing we get too caught up in trying to grow up too much that we lose that inner child and that inner spark. That is very true, actually. Yeah. Um. You touched on. You touched on your older brother. He's. Um. He's playing in Russia at the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. He is. Um. He's taken a full time contract in Russia to play rugby sevens. Mm-hmm. Um. And he's absolutely loving it there. I really hope he comes back, but I'm not too sure if it's on the cards in the next few years. But no, he's absolutely killing it over there at the moment. And yeah, I think he's even looking into buying a coffee shop. I think he's fell in love with Russia. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Well, that's no, that's interesting. I mean, you you mentioned the the competitiveness with him. You've got a younger sister as well, right? Yeah, I've got a younger sister and an older sister. Oh, okay. So who who's who's the absolute eldest? Um, Josh, my my brother. He's okay. One. Yeah. Okay. So what was the dynamic like? Um, obviously, with Josh, you mentioned the tackling drills. What about um, with the girls? What was the dynamic of the competitiveness? Yeah, my older sister was pretty competitive. Her sport was netball, though. So um, she wasn't competitive with me in rugby because I would absolutely smoke her. But in saying that, in netball, I would absolutely get smoked. So it was a very competitive environment growing up, but it was very healthy at the same time. It was sort of like on Sundays, would, would our, our parents would make us stay outside all day, um, we weren't allowed inside, so on those days we'd just go through a multitude of different sports. We'd be playing touch, we'd be playing rugby, um, would be find some, would find a, a board and make a, a tennis ball with it and play games like that. Just anything to to win. I remember growing up. Yeah, no, I love that. I I I really do think that there's something to be said from you know the environment you grow up in with your siblings uh, and how you turn out as an adult. Um, I was the eldest of, of three, so I've got my, my younger sister, who's 18 months younger, and my younger brother, who's 10 years younger. So I've been the, the trailblazer, but at the same time, I've had to bully them around a little bit and just toughen them up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You've yeah. nailed that one there. Yeah. Um, got a quote here from you as well, which, to be honest, when you said it, I, I was like, I can't wait to unpack this with you, because um, I, think, I think this is what life's all about, to be honest. It's perfection is not attainable. But if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Um, I'm sensing some uh, some deep, uh, deep thought, deep thinking vibes from you here. Um, but I do really resonate with that. Um, talk to me about what you're motivated by. Yeah, um, I think I'm motivated by, as I said before, being uncomfortable. I always just want to learn. There's, I'm never at a stage in footy or rugby or really in anything that I do that I'm, I'm just perfectly okay with. I just always want to be better. I always want to chase to learn. I always want to um, invite new challenges and I, at the same time I want to do really well in them. But I think if I'm constantly learning, then I'm constantly getting better. And that's sort of um, what motivates me, uh, challenges and learning and being a better person, being a better player and things like that. That's in a lot of aspects of my life as well. That's with school um, as, as a teacher and that's also with um, sport. Or even sometimes it's with eating. Like it can be anything like, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I like it. I think it's, um, I think often we get caught up in, 
watching and consuming the players on field and, and forgetting, um, and not, not forgetting, but just missing the point of, of, um, of you all as human beings. So it's really good to see you spreading a message like that. Um, Brooke, listen, it's been a pleasure. I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great year where I'm very much looking forward to getting stuck right into the AFLW this year and, and the AFL this year as well. Um, but uh, yeah, you're, you're an effervescent character. Um, I, lo- I love the um, I love the message that you spread, and uh, I think you're I think you're going to do some great things. And, and as you said, you're always looking to learn, and I think that's the mentality that the great ones have. So um, good luck, and uh, I'm sure I'll speak to you again. Thank you so much, Terry. It's been an absolute pleasure to have your support and be on your podcast.